Hello mate and welcome back to Let's Code 4, this time it's personal. And now you might notice in this video we're not actually using uh, Atom at all. This is a creating a image for our game kind of tutorial thing. So I'm not going to teach you how to create characters. You can do that on your own or you can follow one of my many other videos on the topic. This is more just about posing and lighting our characters. So what you need to do is spend a bit of time creating your character, load it into the scene and then pause the video and I will join you once you've done that. So here we've got a character loaded into our scene and what we want to do is we need to take poses and shots of this character in such a way that we can put them on the screen and it looks like they're naturally within the environment. But we don't want them to be so big that they occupy too much of the screen because we're going to want to put multiple characters on the screen at the same time. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to drag ourselves back here and just figure on a good distance from the camera that we need to be. That's fine. Um, actually, do you know what? I'll just do it the easy way. Reset the view by clicking on that button there. I'm going to add a camera by clicking the camera button in the top left hand corner. I'm just going to apply default settings and leave it called camera and hit accept. Now I'm going to use my parameters tab and I'm going to adjust some properties. I'm going to set it to X zero. Y I'm going to put it at about 160 and then Z I'm going to put it at about 2000. That just minimizes any distortion that we may get on our character. X rotate zero, Y rotate zero, Z rotate zero. Now we can jump into our camera and as you can see we're a long way away going to select the camera option in the parameters tab and then I'm going to change the focal length and I'm going to zoom back in probably to somewhere around about there and then using the parameters tab I'm going to adjust the Y value just so that our character is kind of mid thigh is where I'm aiming for with the poses um, we are going to, probably going to have to adjust this slightly and then we can fix any errors in sizing in Photoshop if we so choose. I mean, realistically, what you could actually do is adjust the Y to the point where the top of the character's head is basically at the top of the frame. And then when you do any other renders, you can make sure that that matches so that the character's top of the head is always in the right place. And in this case, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to increase the focal length, sorry, the focal length, not the focal distance, a touch more, and then come back to our parameters and adjust the Y until the top of the character's head is more or less in line with the top of the frame. And you can adjust that as much as you want. Next thing we need to do is revert back to our perspective view. And now we need to add some lighting to our scene so that we can actually see the character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object, a new primitive by clicking on this object shape here that looks like three shapes smushed together. Click on that and then I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to leave it at size one meter and divisions one and just hit accept and then that appears on the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this away from our character and up. And then I'm going to spin that round. Doesn't really matter which way because I have to make, you know, make sure we spin the correct property though. We're actually going to rotate around the X axis. So we just want that to be pointing at our character's head. Then we can rotate round. I actually want to narrow it down on the Z scale to probably about there and then increase it on the X scale. So it's probably more like that. And then we're going to go into our camera and we're just going to check that it's not obscuring our view. So we're just going to translate that up until it's out of our shot like so. Now we can come back to our perspective view. In our surfaces tab, we're going to make sure we've got our, our plane still selected in the surfaces tab. We're going to expand our properties down and then we're going to go straight to emission and we're going to turn our emission on, set it to white come back to our camera and then we're going to jump to Nvidia iRay preview mode and then you'll see the tone mapper and the environment options will appear there. Next thing we need to do is come into our render settings and render settings and change the environment so that it's dome only or scene only so that we don't get any HDRI interference and as you can see we've got very little light there so now we need to adjust. I'm going to switch this to KCDMR2 in the properties tab in the surfaces and emissions tab 
that's going to massively increase the lighting. Now, personally, I don't like this lighting. I think it's very flat. So we're going to do some things to increase that. What I'm first going to do is drop this down to about 250 and probably leave it there. And then I'm also going to come back to my perspective view and I'm going to drag this up a touch more just to give us a little bit more contrast, a little bit more shadow under the chin and the breast. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now we've got some shape being defined there. Having a fill light like this is perfectly fine. Okay, so now we can come back to our perspective view. I'm going to change back out of NVIDIA IRA mode for now. And we're going to create some more shapes. So the next thing I'm going to create, oh, sorry, I'm out of NVIDIA IRA mode, go to texture shader mode, that's better. So now I'm going to create a, this time I think I'm going to make it a, you know, I'm going to stick, you know, I'm going to stick with planes, make life easy. Create another plane. This one's going to come all the way out here to about here. So it's out of shot. Then we're going to rotate it in such a fashion that we need. So we need to rotate it on the Z axis this time. And we rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axis so that it's facing inwards towards our character. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the rotate tool because it's a little difficult to manipulate it to exactly where you want it to go. So I'm going to just point this to about there. Use the move tool and I'm going to slot this a little bit further behind the character. We need to drag it up because currently it's in a weird place. And if we come to our top view and zoom out a little bit, we should be able to see our shape there. And again, we can do some rotating if we need to, to just rotate them. Oh, that's the wrong, that's the wrong key. We need to rotate it that way there like that. And then jump back into our camera view. We can see it in the frame, but we're going to change the frame of this, uh, the width of this shot once we've got the character in a pose. So I'm going to come to the surfaces tab on this one, change the emission. And this time I'm going to select a yellowish light, a yellowy orangey kind of light, uh, kind of round about there. And then we're going to have to crank the power up on this one quite a bit. So let's see how that looks. Jump into NVIDIA IRA preview mode again. Give it a chance to have a bit of a think. That's pretty much what I'm after. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So we can come back out of NVIDIA IRA mode. I've done it again. I keep misclicking today. I'm having a bit of a misclicky day. So come back to our perspective view. So that is our second light source complete. Happy with that. Next thing we're going to do, I think this time what we're going to do is we're just going to select our plane. We're going to go to edit, object, uh, duplicate, sorry, duplicate node, and then it creates a second one. Then we can use our move tool to drag this one over to here. And we're going to rotate it. We're going to use top view just to make life a bit easier, I think. Hit rotate and then drag it around. So this one needs to be pointed in that way. And then we also need to go into our surfaces tab. And this time in our emission, we're going to change and we're going to go for a cyan light source like that. And we're going to actually bump up the value of the brightness a little bit on this. Not too much. We're going to say 2250, I think, should do the job. Jump back into our camera. Have a look in our NVIDIA IRO mode. Now, this one's obviously a great distance away, but it should give us more or less what we're after. In fact, if I go into perspective view, we can see that this one's actually quite a bit further away. So use our move tool. I actually want this one to be closer so that it appears bigger because I want it to cast a larger shadow, which means we're going to have to rotate it a little bit more. Give us that effect there. That's perfect. Now we come back into our camera view. We can see that that side is a little bit better lit. And we've got our fill light currently um, our light above is, is acting as a fill light. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to switch back to texture shading, come to perspective view. I'm going to change this light source ever so slightly. I'm going to change its scale. I believe it was the Z scale. We're going to come down even narrower on that one. And then in the brightness, I'm going to bring this back up to about 750. And then what I'm going to do is behind the camera perhaps that's quite a long distance away 
yeah I think I'll do it behind the camera only for simplicity's sake so what I'm going to do is create a new plane we'll just make this one meter by one meter for now so that we can get it into position use our move tool or we could just go to our parameters we know that our camera is 2000 on the z-axis so let's say 2050 so there it is we're going to rotate it 90 degrees along the x-axis and then we're going to scale it up to be about 10 thousand maybe that's a bit much maybe it's not we will see that's quite big isn't it let's come back down to maybe five thousand there we go now when we jump into our camera we can go into our nvidia ira preview mode again we haven't currently turned that into a light source but i just want to make sure that our key light is as bright as it needs to be which it currently isn't so we need to get our plane one come back into the surfaces tab change our emission and let's just change this to 1500 and see what that does it's not too bad i need that shadow to be a little bit sharper though so i might adjust its x scale back down to about 150 adjust its y scale to maybe eight percent and then change its y translate to about 300 three meters up so yes yeah, nice and you can see the shadows are sharper but the shadows are now much darker as well so we need to readjust the brightness of this object let's make it 2200 maybe a bit more let's go with 5000 maybe even a little bit more let's go with 10,000 that's better that's giving us the light that we want that's fine and now what we're going to do is we're going to select our final plane and this is going to take a lot of uh, messing around because i think what you're going to see is as soon as we turn this on it's going to oh surprisingly it hasn't so let's see what happens when we switch to kcdm up to yeah that's suddenly become massively bright so let's change that to about 50. all we wanted to do is just take some of that shadow away Fairly happy with that one. Let's come back up to 30. That's perhaps too much. Okay, let's come just try 15. We still want the shadows to be there, but that the whole point of that fill light is just to give Iray something to work with in the shadow so that there's, there's no part of this model that's completely dark. So fairly happy with that. We can come back to texture shaded mode. What I would recommend doing at this point is saving your scene because you're going to reuse this same light setup for every character so that they all look like they're in the same room so go ahead save this scene as something that you're going to remember and then we'll carry on with the next part okay so now that we've saved that the next stage is to make sure that our character is posed correctly now once again i am not going to teach you how to pose your characters I would strongly recommend that you check out my uh, Dash Studio playlist if you're not sure on anything along those lines. But what I will do is give you a chance to pause the video, pose your character how you want, and then we'll look into making sure that everything is tickety-boo for our first render. So now you should have something roughly along these lines that shows your characters nicely posed. Next thing I want to do is just quickly make sure that her eyes are pointed at the camera, so select her eyeball. And then in parameters, we can go to uh, right eye, point at, and then we're going to say point at the camera. And do the same thing with the left eye. You want to make sure this happens because in game, these characters are going to be looking at you, the player. So if they're looking off somewhere else, it's not going to look great unless they're obviously interacting with something else in the environment. But for now, we just want to make sure that the character is actually looking at the camera and then making sure that your head height is more or less where you want it to be so that in future renders it's easy to match up cool so now the last thing we want to do is actually adjust the resolution of our image so that it's the size we want it to be so in our render settings tab we're going to come on into here and in general we can see currently this is way too big our screen is going to be 1080p, so we want 1080 high to be the maximum that it's going to be. But I actually only want these characters to fill probably about 60% of the screen. So I'm actually going to set my height to 700. Next thing I want to do is I'm actually going to adjust it because 
I, we've got something on the side of it that we don't need, but we only really want it to be as wide as the character itself. So having this, let's set this to be our main uh, defining kind of uh, distance. So we need to adjust this. Nine by nine is a square. So if I were now to select that, that's given us that, but we don't need it even to be a square. So I'm actually going to adjust it and I'm going to make that maybe seven and that's much better. It's still 700 pixels high, but it's only 544 pixels wide, which means we're maximizing or rather minimizing the amount of pixels that we use. Now that's perfectly fine. And we can actually set up in RemPy to use the center of the image as the anchor rather than the left or right corner. So that it always means that as long as we've got our character centered in our frame here, we can have the distance across the image, however much we want it and need it to be to fit the character in. So what you need to do now is go ahead and render the image out. So go ahead and do that. And then we'll see what the result is. So that renders done. That's ready to be saved. You'll notice that I didn't put an expression on the character in this image. And that's because this is the neutral image, which means they have no expression on their face. You can be as proactive or as lazy as you want in this really if you really wanted to you could just re-render the same image with a different facial expression on it for each level of interaction with the character um, it's entirely up to you if you're hand drawing these images then this is obviously irrelevant but how you choose to do this is entirely up to you now i've chosen to do it this way i'm going to have different poses and expressions for the level of affection love lust etc that they have for the character but uh, that's basically it, guys. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves. All right. Bye-bye.